This video demonstrates how you can make an intro with a map for a travelogue. For this, I'm using the root animation options from Video Vision 13. Maybe you'll find inspiration here for your next holiday video. I went to France on my vacation, so naturally I need an appropriate map. The map assistant provides one for me. I enter Paris in the location search. Then I switch to the map tab to make changes to the map's appearance. I'm changing the resolution for the map. Since I want to zoom into the map later, I might as well use the 4K resolution. I'm also changing the map style. I'm using the Explorer map style from the On the Road 2 expansion pack. Then I pan and zoom my map section so all my destinations are easy to see. Depending on the country and the travel route, it could be more difficult than my example, but you can work with multiple map sections and compile them into one image. I'll also show an alternative map at the end. I've now taken over the map and you can see the map and a travel route in the layout designer. We don't need them for our first example though. That's why I'm removing the path object from the timeline. The first thing I want to do is mark the places I visited on the map. By adding these markers the route is becoming clearer. I'm going to go to the simple shapes and there's a section for rings here. I'll start with the wide ring and add it to my map animation chapter below the map. I can color the object using the image editor in the properties. I'll choose a not too bright red. Then I'll shrink the ring and place it at the first location, which this time is Paris. If you change your mind about marking, you can save yourself some work with a trick. I'd rather have the thinner ring, I'll just add it here. Then I'll copy the file name and paste it into my existing thicker ring. The graphic has now simply been replaced. I can remove my helper object and now align my thin ring more precisely. I'll specify the two second interval and then I'll copy my object with the control key pressed. And move the object to the next station in the layout designer. I'll repeat this process until all my markers are on the map. In the bottom right corner of the layout designer, I can zoom in on the view and thus see my places better. I'll also ensure that my rings always appear at two second intervals. So they'll then appear on the map one after another and not all at once. To restore the default zoom in the layout designer, you can click on the magnifying glass in the bottom right. I've set my eight markers and I'm still adjusting the length of the objects. I've already extended the card. And then I'll play it once. Gradually the markers will appear on the map. But I don't just want markers, I also want pictures with them. I go into the file browser of the toolbox and drag the picture of the first station to the matching marker in the timeline. And I'm also adjusting the display length. The picture is reduced in size in the layout designer and moved to the right position. Since we will pan over the map later, in other words, zoom in on it a bit, it's not so bad if the picture here is a bit smaller. You can use picture effects to give the picture a certain shape. The picture effects in the masks section are suitable for this. I'm going to take this hexagon shape here. The picture also gets a certain fade in. I'll choose from the middle. 
but without alpha blending. That's what it looks like. And I save myself some work again by copying the existing picture object with the control key pressed and positioning it in the correct spot on the timeline. Then I just drag the picture for the second position from the file browser. And in the layout designer, I move everything back to the right position on the map. This second picture now has the same properties as my first picture. And again, I copy the picture by holding down the control key and only replace the picture content, changing the position eight times over until each of my markers has a picture. I'm adjusting the duration of the objects and map again because I want to do a camera pan over the map and its life elements. So I'll close the chapter on map animation, highlight it and select Merge into Flexi Collage on the left timeline. Then make sure the Flexi Collage is selected because that's what we're going to switch to in camera pan mode. Pan mode. I set the aspect ratio of the flexi collage to crop and with the shift key pressed I'm going to make the selection frame for the camera pan of the flexi collage smaller. This means my overall view will look enlarged when played. Both the pictures and the places and markers are more identifiable with this. And now I want to add a pan over the map. The swing columns after the elephant in front of the castle starts at 12 seconds. I'll add a token, put it on top of the existing token, and enter the time value of 12 seconds. Then I'll add another marker and move the window a little to the top right. The movement should take 4 seconds. I'll enter the time value as 16 seconds, and now we can see it. After the elephants, there's a camera panning in. And we can also view the rest of the images in a larger size. That's basically enough, but I'd like to give a few more suggestions. You can add image effects to the cards anytime using the image editor. You also have several templates available through the existing image effects in the toolbox, so you can apply a latte effect using a gallery. I chose dark, creating beautiful saddle colors on my card. Additionally, you can, of course, always map out a route, which I'll show you now. I have to put the route on my map as it actually is. Without the camera, the flexi collage swivels, so I temporarily remove the map animation from the flexi collage. Then I drag the decorated path from the toolbox below my chapter map animation and extend the duration at the same time. I can now see my route and I'm adjusting its appearance. I'm changing the path style and width. And the color? I could choose a vehicle. But in this case I don't want one. My route should run past my markers, so to know where my markers are, I start the live preview on the designer. Then I place the playhead here at the end to see all the markers and pictures. Then I drag the root tags onto my timeline. I'll add more tags via the plus. 
The two second intervals work perfectly with how I'm using the pictures. The first and last markers should enter or exit the map from the top. Exit. In the designer, you can see that the route would now run over the pictures. To prevent that from happening, instead, the route leads below the pictures for a long time. I'm also changing the track order of the objects here. The chapter card animation is then returned to the flexi collage. And this is what it looks like. And as I mentioned before, I want to show you an alternative to the maps from the map wizard in the section called Decoration on the Go To. If you have the expansion pack, you'll find some countries as graphics, but there's also a countries and continents object where you can use a gallery. You can choose the cards and also determine how they look. I'm going to choose France again. Don't choose a texture here. And let's color the object a little bit. As a background for my card, I could now use any background image or this background object, but I opt to use the color gradient found in the dynamic shape. I'll quickly whip up a French flag using the three colors of the tricolor, blue, white and red. In the settings I'll choose color reduction 3. So my three colors are separate and I'll also rotate the colors by 90 degrees. Now I have a French flag and in front of it the French map. On this map, I can now draw the most important cities. I'll use a text object for this. I'll put it in the appropriate place. By the way, this is also possible with the maps from the map wizard where you can add your own labels to the locations. Of course, I can also apply markers and photos as shown in my earlier example. This could be how it looks, this time with round image effect masks. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks.